Hi, and welcome to the Tomato Timer, a podcast about learning to learn. I'm Zubair from Xenos, and I'm tuning in live with experts from around the world, asking your questions and hearing their stories. All before the timer goes off. 24 minutes and 39 seconds to go. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 21 of the Tomato Timer. Today, we take an interlude from the STEM Career Series for a special episode in association with UN75 and Impactor to speak about a really important conversation, the global conversation for the future of our planet. And it gets even more special because I'm joined by two amazing guests. And on my virtual left-hand side is Edward Sayed, a media and strategy advisor for the UN75. Thank you for joining us, Edward. Thank you for having me. And on my virtual right, we have Mike and Witt, the business director at Impactor. Welcome, Mike. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here as well. Thank you for joining us, guys. And just to kick this off, Edward, could you just tell us a little bit about what the UN75 is and what is it aiming to do? Sure. So the UN75 was launched in January by the Secretary General. It's the largest exercise mounted by the UN to gather public opinion and crowdsource solutions. Um, if you can imagine, we're tackling huge uh, problems like this pandemic that we're facing at the moment, utilizing mm. the UN system. And really, the UN is designing the UN25 to engage the world on opinion, perspectives, analysis to be submitted to the UN for its survey, the UN25 survey, which will map the journey for the next 25 years. Mm. This is a, a initiative that is really trying to crowdsource key solutions from all parts of stakeholders, particularly young people across the globe. This is really about shaping our future together, and the institution recognizes this. So that's, that's really the premise of what it's doing. But of course, there is the element of, of commemorating um, the 75 years, but looking beyond that 75 years is the key part of it. So looking at the SDGs, for example, um, Sustainable Development Goals, and how that will be defining the next decade. Um, and this will be presented to global leaders in September in the General Assembly that will take place. Mm. And in, if, if it was to be kind of like simplified, just from my understanding at least, the global conversation is kind of happening and it's being recorded through a survey that's being conducted um, and, and, reach, and trying to be reached out to as many people as possible. Is that correct? Exactly. I mean, we're scaling up our efforts to give voice to the global public, to you, and give people, to, give people the opportunity to shape its priorities. Uh, we're doing this through a one-minute survey available on the link below on this particular channel. And this survey, it takes about a minute to complete, available in 50 languages, uh, readily made accessible and possible uh, to enable people to ask and share their views uh, through this initiative. We want to connect with people and connect people to the UN uh, to help us shape the future. And, yeah. and again, like I said earlier, the results will be presented to the world leaders in September 2020 at the General Assembly when the international community will set out the vision for the future at the official commemoration of the UN's 75th anniversary. Uh, and, and to give you an example, we've partnered, you know, to, to ensure that we can reach people, we've partnered with institutions in fact, 3,000 partners that are working across industries and sectors such as gaming, fashion, sports industries, NGOs, youth networks, uh, big partners including Facebook, Instagram. Uh, we're also working with partners such as Vodafone to reach people uh, that may not have access to internet so that they can also engage with us. So this, this is, this, I mean, sum, sum this up. What we want this anniversary to be mm is a turning point in bringing people closer together and bringing their hopes, fears, priorities for the future to us so we can better serve them and the future uh, generations. That's really powerful and, and we're going to get in more into that. But Mike, tell us a little bit about your story. You, after you finished your engineering degree, you started your career in the oil and gas industry. So what was it that made you kind of, after 10 years of doing that, leave and then turn to the world of sustainability in specific? And it's, uh, it's a quite a contrast in, in lifestyle, I have to say. Basically, I did spend 10 years working in the oil and gas 
as industry. And as I was doing that, I actually I have to admit, I quite enjoyed myself. I really, I really liked the, the heavy and risky industry. And then basically in, at the end of 2018, I just had a moment of, of thinking, what am I doing next? You know, what, what do I really want to do? And, and there was no sort of, nothing had happened. I was not hmm. hating anything, or, but I just had a moment of, I need to do something completely different. Um, so I quit my job and took a bit of a sabbatical and basically just went searching a bit for what to do. Um, and, and first I thought, okay, I'm an engineer. I've done various things. Let's work with renewable energy. That's an obvious, that's an obvious, simple sort of sideways step. And more by coincidence, I met with Johanna Mayer, the, the CEO of Impactor, and she just started was setting sort of the foundation of Impactor. And I met her more to network about the renewable energy where she was coming from. And she told me about Impactor and what she also told me about, which I think Ed will find funny, is the 17 sustainable development goals. And um, I have to admit, I had never heard about them. And I was, I was quite shocked um, about myself. <laughs> and I, because I'm an engineer, I kind of looked at them and was like, wow, there's goals and there's being measured and there's clear targets. And all of a sudden, everything just, it was like, I had this moment of things making sense. And and I went home and and then called Johanna shortly after and said, look, I I need to st- I need to join your startup. I need to be part of this. Um, it was really quite quite interesting. And the main thing that really I had was sort of going away saying, wow, there's all these things and there's all these actions, there's all these solutions out there that exist. Why aren't we doing anything? Why are we waiting? Um, and so yeah, so I kind of just had a moment of made sense, and all of a sudden I I felt a cr- a great sort of need to mm. to take action and to inspire other people to do to do the same. Yeah. And what is it exactly that Impactor is doing and how is it working exactly? Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's a good question. <laughs> Impactor really is is a global community um, of people like you, me, Ed, there who, who really have a joint vision that we want to accelerate the sustainability, the sustainability revolution. It's really about anyone who wants to take an action, whether it's big or small, um, which in some way helps help, help save the world. Um, so it's a, it's a platform. It has different different ways you can go out and take actions. But one of the things we're working on to do in the startup is creating an app, which, which helps and suggest actions you can take or where you can share the actions you want to do or, um, and, and inspire others and share, share the efforts together to make it really tangible. And what we're really developing right now and working on is, is something that helps and suggests so you can do one fun bite-sized action every day that both brings joy to life, but also chips away into saving the world. Mm. So yeah, so we have a prototype app out at the moment, but we're working on developing the next version, which hopefully will take the world by storm. <laughs> um, yeah, and join the That's community. And um connect all the all the great people out there who who are, who are ready to to start doing something or are already doing things yeah um yeah and so um now edward how did that this collaboration what was it that at impactor that kind of struck you and and why was this collaboration or association with the un75 and everything that you've done uh how did that come about well i mean i've, I've worked i've worked with joe um I remember speaking to Joe and, and being invited to, to personally collaborate. I'm a big believer on Impactor, uh, but from the perspective of the UN75 and the wider topic in, in its activities, I think what's interesting is for someone like myself who's involved in both of these amazing organizations is that what draws, and I, and I believe a lot of people are drawn to this, is that there's a real sense of purpose and action. Uh, to change the world. Uh, and essentially, this is what, what drew me to the UN75. It's, the UN75 isn't just about celebrating its commemoration or its anniversary. Um, it is really looking at having objectives that can engage people in a way that has never happened before. This is, a, I can't stress enough, this is the world's biggest conversation from the UN that's ever taken place. And it's very, very important that everyone, every single person as possible can be part of this survey. The survey only takes one minute, but has such a profound impact, enabling people to have voice 
And, and by impact, what I mean by that voice and that impact and the connection there is that you don't really have a middleman here. You are directly submitting your views and your opinions to the UN as part of its journey to, so the UN can actually absorb this information and understand how to mm. best serve the international community who everyone is part of, you know? And I think that's, that's the amazing part. And someone like myself, who has been working in media for some time now, uh, covering stories, producing stories, collaborating with businesses, institutions, um, building assets at times around the UN um, for major news channels across the globe. I've seen the real development of how this is happening. And what excites me is when I see organizations that are not just looking at uh, regurgitating those topics, but are looking at actionable activities, right? Because if we want our future to change, we want a better, positive, epidemic-free future to some degree, mm. then we have to look at how we can learn from where we are right now and how we can implement actions that have great impact. And again, sometimes it could be the smallest things and it could be, the, it could be a, a different scale of, of contribution. Regardless, I think what attracts someone like me, just to give an example, is that both these institutions are led by impact. Both these initiatives, if you, if you want, if I can put it that way. The UN75, yeah. um, on its separate merits, is led by its initiative. And of course, Impactor, and the reason why I was attracted person to inter- in Impactor is, again, it's led by impact. And that really means that those who want to see mm-hmm. real change, who want to participate, whether small or large scale, doesn't matter, really have that opportunity. And now, Mike, and you were talking about hearing the SDGs for the first time not too long ago. And I have to be honest, um, I was lucky enough because I was growing up with a with my father working in a development bank. So I knew about the MDVs and the SDGs as they were like happening. But now more than ever before, something like, I was just talking to Edward about this, that the Millennium Development Goals were things that I'd remembered reading once in a textbook, on my, in my economics textbook at IGCSE level. And that's it. That was, that was the only time I'd mentioned it. And yet it was those key indicators and key goals and metrics that the world was working towards. And yet everyone, it, it seemed like the, global, the world didn't know what was happening. Now, the SDGs are definitely something that have been much better promoted and a lot more people know about them. Um, as you know, like I, my kind of goal and the, the one I champion is goal number four, which is making education accessible to everyone. But in particular, why is it, what is it about the UN75? Mm-hmm. I think it's something to do with the goal orientation that, that attracted you and, and especially in your kind of like engineering mindset. What, what's, what's so interesting for that? I think there's kind of two things. The one thing is, first of all, like, I think it's very, the fact that it was very, um, it was very broad. So I generally, it was very broad, but very specific at the same time. So I, I think there was the 17 goals. It wasn't just end world hunger or that's or end global warming that, because it becomes very abstract. It's very, it's very, very specific and it covers, but all topics. Um, and so, so that's something I, I first like really sort of struck, struck something. Um, and then I, of course, the fact that you can, that it's being measured and, and followed up quite systematically, that that's nice because that means if you get lots of people to do an impact, you can actually, hopefully someone actually see a change on some of these parameters. Mm. Um, all, all of that being said, though, I still think there's a big communication job forward to make it even more tangible because there's sometimes it can be quite sort of this number of a goal but what what does that really feel like what do you really do with it um sometimes when you break it down even further and sort of see the actual action you know you see someone if it's a beach cleanup picking up you know you're yourself picking up a piece of plastic or and all of a sudden that's when it comes to life i think there's that that element that that like impact and also edward is kind of working on is seeing how do you bridge that still sort of something that's quite process like and being measured to something that has a storyline to it that is engaging and makes people really feel like they want to engage in these topics yeah yeah you're absolutely right saying something like end world hunger is 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 an amazing and something that we're all striving towards but at the same time it's just not tangible for me 
as a you know 22 year old trying to like think about all the other things that I want to do in my life as well. But if you tell me that hey, if you can donate this much to a, a food bank or do this task or go out and and help the ocean by picking up you know trash uh, along the coastline, these things seem like much more tangible, achievable. And if I can somehow say that this metric contributed towards the bigger picture, it it sounds like something I would I'd like to be involved in. I'd like to be part of the the whole world changing. And and as I as I'm kind of sharing kind of my perspective, why is it so important right now to to engage us the millennials, Generation Z, in this conversation and and be part of this uh, kind of not just the the discussion of what we should be working towards, but also the actions that we need to be taking on a day-to-day basis? Well, it's remarkable how similar um, results we have from across the globe. Data that shows that people think climate change will be a defining trend shaping our future to, uh, with more than double the response of any other issue, such as conflict or violence, which came second, um, and health risk third. Having risen sharply um, since late February, and of course, an overwhelming majority of respondents, 95% actually, uh, saw the need for countries to work together to manage global trends with a noticeable increase from late February, you know, as the upheaval caused by the COVID-19 spread around the world. Mm. And in our independent world, the, the fate of one community in one place is linked to the wellness of another place. So... You know, I think what's more important today is that when we recognize that we're all interconnected and that something you may do, whether it's in a small scale somewhere, maybe even in the Amazon, will have a ripple effect that will will reverberate across the globe. And and I think that's also the reason why the UN75 would love to hear from your listeners uh, from you and from every single person, most importantly of all stakeholders that we need to engage is youth, uh, young people like you who joining us today can make a difference. You know, your voices are important more than ever before. Your solutions are important more than ever before. Uh, and so our ma- my main cause here is really to, to invite as many pe- per- people as possible to the survey, which are links below on this. And, and the reason why I focus on that is because there's a real measurable impact. I mean, from the statistics I've just given you for, and, and the potential more information that we can gather and what we can learn from and how we can unite as part of this global conversation that can influence um, the, the, the leaders across the globe to know how we can define the next decade or so. And this is important. I think this is the most important part of the global conversation. Again, this is enabling people to be able to directly communicate their perspectives. Personally, I Mm. can't remember a time something like this happened. The closest I suppose we'll get to something like this is perhaps voting. And again, these are regional things we're talking about. When we're talking about this particular global conversation, this is something that has an impact. And this is something that's on your fingertips. Yeah. Nearly everybody has a mobile phone. And those who don't, we're, we're trying to find solutions to get access to the survey. But can you imagine? There's an old saying that, that everyone will have heard of. You know, three minds are better than one. Imagine we had the vast majority of this planet. Can you just imagine that? It's phenomenal. I think that's one way of, 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 of yeah. summarizing this. And... What's interesting is that the UN75 is looking for, for you know, people to work with us, organizations to work with us. And my associates, they are working very hard to, to define this. And I think at some point, you know, we're, we're having discussions at the moment with Impactor. It'd be, it'd be exciting to, to work with Impactor as well. I mean, I, I'm a big fan personally. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I, I, I'm sure we'll find a way. But again, I, I want to extend this invitation to the world because it's important, again, that we focus on impact. And everyone that's in the camp of supporting and saving our planet, it's only a minute. Take this survey. Do what you can. That's where we're going to have the real difference. Mm. That is where, I mean, look, if you wanted a vision of how we can save this planet, 
we have 17 golds that possibly will be increased to 18 golds, okay? And 17 golds are going to be the, the, they're not the end of your situation, but they are definitely a roadmap for us to work around that enable us to, to congregate around, to, to measure against. And I think that's the important part of the goals. And it's now more than ever before widely accepted, okay, and acknowledged. And looking at the future again, like I say, all of the innovations that have ever existed have been delivered by the human mind. And if we can just have as many people as possible, if not the entire planet to work with us, can you imagine? I think that's a real positive. There is a real opportunity, a real opportunity to not only do all the great things that we want to achieve, but also to go beyond that, you know? And in a form that hasn't got layers, you know, the, the survey will enable you. Yeah, that's part of why the UN75 is such an important initiative because it's not just um, thinking about the here and now, but it's thinking about 25 years after. It's thinking about what we'll be thinking, what we'll be considering when, when the UN turns 100. And just to imagine the kind of the changes we've seen in our lives over the past, I can't even say, like five years maybe? The, the way, I, I'm not that old, but like I can still remember very, very clearly playing snakes on, on, my, no, on my parents' Nokia phone. You know? <laughs> Really? Yeah, I actually can. And, and the thing is, uh, and my, the first time we discovered the touchscreen existed, and now I cannot imagine a device without being able to just click, touch it, and, and things to, to change. And, and that's just technology. There's just, I can't even start on, the, on all the amazing changes that have happened in this world. So it, it's, it's like this kind of like, we're on this kind of a cliff end, you know, where it just it feels like every time we get there, it just keeps going further and further away. We're, we're, we're just continuously getting better and, and doing things differently and finding better solutions. So it's, it, feels, Absolutely. it feels crazy to imagine what we can achieve and what we're, where we will be in, in exactly. And that's, and that's what I think, um, I think what Ed was saying in terms of getting, getting young people involved, the millennials and Gen Z, why, why should you get involved? And I do really think it's, you know, the, the youngest generation is so media savvy and is so connected. Yeah. So that's so your, your influence as one person, because you're so connected is, is so big compared to, to what it would have been 20 years ago. So, so you have, you have an nominal power in, in that sense. And the other thing is, I think there's the younger mm. generations heavily influence the older generations as well. Uh, so, so it's very, it's very inspiring. For, for millennials and Gen Z, if they go out and, and promote actions, the, the older generations will kind of follow along to that, as is my, is my belief. So rather than having, you know, older generations tell you what to do, I think it should be the other way around, which I think would be amazing if we're able to, to, show, to show that responsibility. I, th I think what's also interesting, I mean, whilst the COVID-19 pandemic is, is, is happening right now, we've actually seen, you know, because of the pandemic, the face-to-face -face dialogues, all by impossible to some degree. And I think actually the UN Sin 5 initiative has become more popular, gathering many more respondents, you know, in, in terms of this reflection and the importance of the global issues. Um, and actually looking at that in the international cooperation during the crisis that is being felt all over the world is really helping the dialogue and the global conversation in some degree, because I think people realize the real level of impact you know, all of a sudden, we, we went from our normal lives to being locked in. And this is everyone, whatever part of society, mm. whatever nation you're part of, wherever you are in the world, has been impacted by this epidemic. And again, you know, I think that gives people a lot of time to reflect, to think, why are we here? Um, what can we do for our future? Yeah. What do we want our future to look like? And, you know... How do we voice that? Well, the survey is there, and the survey is definitely accessible um, for you to be able to voice your opinion. And, that's, and, I keep, and, I, and I have to say, this is the most important part of, I, I suppose, the technology revolution. It enables us to, to achieve this to some degree. To communicate with each other across borders, across, across pretty much everything. And I, I was just going to kind of mention as well that it's been amazing to see, like the pandemic has been you know, horrible and, and devastating. And um, it's so sad to, but also 
the, the kind of opportunities and the best of humanity that it's brought out, it's it's truly amazing as well because and it's and it's particularly the youth that are taking action. We see startups and initiatives being started completely remotely. People who've never met before in their life are doing things together and making an impact, a measurable impact that can be put on metrics, that can be put on graphs. And we can actually see that kind of connecting to the next kind of, um, whether it's a sustainable development goals or just a, or, or, or a metric in your locality. And it's truly amazing. And I guess, Mike, and I just want to hear a bit more about why you think uh, or what you've seen at Impactor that's, that's really kind of like, I guess, encouraging when you look at and when you think about this generation? Um, I think what's been really encouraging in this is, we've basically, first of all, we've had an amazing response. So very, you know, without having put out a big fancy tool or anything yet, we, we've had amazing amounts of, of people come in and just wanting to join and help out. And then each person has kind of brought their own personal impact with them. So I keep getting, it's, it's mm. every day I get at least one kind of encounter with one of, of the people in our community who's joining that gives that very personal kind of kind of boost where I'm thinking, wow, you know, I mean, these are just the, the people we're seeing. I mean, if you, if you multiply that, because there's so many out there who, who want to do something, um, that, that is such a big power waiting to be unleashed. Um, so, so I'm, I'm so, I, I yeah, it's, both a feeling but we also have numbers on it and, and you know getting massive feedback um i think it's also the fact that it's really seeing it from very young people all the way up to to the older generation the, the people who've worked in the field maybe for years are finally saying well finally after being in this field for 20 years now all of a sudden i'm not the crazy one now other people are speaking the same language as me yeah. and yet you get so touched by that you know because clearly i was one of these people until a year ago didn't didn't have anything to do with that with that space so um, I completely yeah um, and of course at the moment also I'm, I feel like I'm meeting a lot of people who who are doing exactly that are leaving their their old their old work life or ways behind and, and making real change not not just you know small difference in buying an organic vegetable or but actually making some real big differences um, also p people who I would have never thought in my own friendship group or further out so i think there's there's many many signs showing that there's that the time is right yeah um and that we we are ready well the time is right and the time has to be right in some cases as well because you know the, the world won't stop for anyone uh things will continue and if we don't change our ways and things things that we take for granted and will will just not exist anymore and i guess i'm i want to kind of build on another angle at least of a little bit is we, we know the impact, we know how important it is for the youth to be involved, but more than ever before, maybe COVID has kind of like helped highlight this as well, the media influence on our lives and how it results in what we, how we perceive the world, the questions we ask, uh, the things we think about certain people, certain organizations, certain things happening around the world. It's so, so heavily skewed or sometimes polarized by certain agencies or or certain things that uh, are beyond our control. Uh, what are we going to do about that? And I am I think uh, either of you who, who want to chip in, how, how are we going to use media for good to influence people's opinions? I think media has to always be free. That's an important part of any platform. It has to be free to analyze, to present information, um, in the correct manner. Mm. Media is always going to be a, a, a... Media can be defined in so many ways. There's so many parts of media. But I think media is important keeping people informed. But I think it's also important that, that um, we do as much as we can to avoid an infodemic. Um, because media is not just about the traditional media or, or news, etc. There's now social media, mm. which means that people can exchange ideas peer-to-peer. -peer. They're doing this across global platforms. And this can create an infodemic, a misunderstanding um, that can have a profound effect on people. So we, I think we all have to be, as citizens, a bit more wise because media is on our phones. It's everywhere. And we have to be conscious 
of what we're doing as individuals as well as influencing our peers, our friends, our groups, our networks. So that's, that's an important part, I'd say, in the role of media. But I'd also say to you that there are such amazing platforms out there that you can subscribe to that can really help define, you know, the information you have and how you work with that. Mm. And Mike, uh, you kind of have, um, in some ways, impact can be called the social media for change as well. So uh, what was that? What was that? What was kind of the, the premise of developing it? And, and how have you seen the power of social media and the power of media in general to influence and empower certain tasks, certain goals? I mean, we've definitely, what you described earlier, the sort of the problematic is something we've discussed a lot. And really as a starting point, coming out with these, the first thing is to make things tangible and, and relatable. I think it's really for us, the biggest thing is making anything to do with more sustainability and, and very broad, the different topics, making it sustainable, uh, making it tangible people. That's, that's the first bit, how do you do that? And that's our storytelling. But then part two, which we really is sort of what we really work a lot on is how do, you, how do we make sure that what we actually promote or suggest is actually a sustainable action? And I think that's where Impactor really goes in and differentiates itself to other platforms is that we have a group of almost 300 experts so far that go on all these different topics that go in and, and help guide us on various subjects so they can come in and look at a business and say is that a sustainable business they can come in and look at an action and do the same thing and um help us endorse something and, and rather than it being you know like other social media basically whatever gets pushed to the top which you could say is an action on news is generally whoever pays the most uh, but in this case mm. that that's definitely not the model we will use it's it's going to be some kind of human algorithm of you know using experts and 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 people like you know, people like yourself who, who have an insight on a specific topic to sort of say is this actually is this fake news or is this a real action um, obviously we're not in new, we're not a, a, a yeah as such but i think there's something of making sure that you're not promoting anything without having some kind of fact check or slightly more and that's definitely something we we're trying to do. Hmm. And uh, well, you know, I have to just kind of like uh, point out that our episodes are usually uh, a Pomodoro length, and that's exactly twenty five minutes. But because we've had two amazing guests, um, and the conversation is so important, I've not really tried to cut it off, and I've I've, I've, I've let it flow organically, grow into something which I think is amazing. Um, but now I'm I want to get to. The tangible bit, actually, you know, the, the thing we've been talking about, you know, what is it that we can do today and what is it that we need to start making a change in our lives from today? Or, you know, what's, what is it, what's going to make the, the impact actually come out and it's, it's going to be something that's measurable, it's going gonna, it's gonna to reach the world. It might be a small thing, but how do, we, how do we start taking those actions? And now to both of you, as we kind of wrap up, I want to just ask this, what is it that we should be doing as young people? Uh, as people who are going to in the future be running this world uh, to some extent, <laughs> hopefully to the, in a better way. Um, but what, what are those things that we can start taking actions on now? And I know the UN 75 is an amazing tool and survey that will hopefully reach millions of people. And, then, and, 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 it's, and it's, it's kind of voice will, will reach the real people who can make a change. But other than that, the Impactor app is an amazing place to get some uh, things to do on a day-to-day -day basis on smaller tasks which are tangible. W what, where should we be heading towards? And I'll start with Edward. What do you think? I, I'd like to focus on the present. Yeah. Um, and, and that is, I think, I'd like to invite you all to sort of take part on the survey. And the, li the link, as I mentioned earlier, is, is down below. And also what I'd like, I mean, recognizing that young people have social networks that they can influence within their own, their own personal sphere. Mm. I'd, I'd like, and I think we have, a important social media campaign that we would also love for you uh, and for your listeners to join into. And after taking the survey, what you can do is you can write on a piece of paper, I had my say, 
and share it on your social with the hashtag, hashtag UN75. And I think that's going to be powerful. Imagine everyone did that and they got one more person to contribute, one more voice to shape this future. We can really deploy the concept of free minds is greater than one on a scale which is unbelievable. Mm. And I think that's, that's what I'd like everyone to focus on as a present. And Mike, and what about you? Yeah, very, very similar, just, you know, from my angle. <laughs> that, of course, the first thing I would, sort of my call to action would be get people to join our Impactor community. So on impactors.global. And, and then do the same thing as what basically what Edward suggests, you know, take your first action. That could be doing the, the survey or, or whatever action you think makes sense for you. And, and then share it on the platform and share it to others and get more people to do that same action and getting inspired by, by other actions that are out there. Um, there's, there's many, many things we can do. I think I wouldn't overthink it. I would just choose one area you're passionate about and, and, and do just one small thing in that direction. And then from there on, I think you'll quickly, anyone will be inspired to do, to do more without having to, to really even overcomplicate it. So, and I think that way we can take the world by storm, you know, everyone to sign, build, promote it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Take the world by storm. Take the world by storm. I think I want to end on that. Thank you guys so Thank much you. for joining, joining us today. Um, Edward, it's been a pleasure having you. Likewise. Mike, an awesome pl pleasure to have you as well. Yeah, great to talk to both of you and and it's going to be it's, it's amazing to have all had all these listeners as well join in and hopefully the listeners who are listening offline not the live ones will also be interested in what we've just spoken about and take the actions that we will kind of describe in in the description as well so that you can have easily access easily access those things so thank you so much for joining us and we will see you soon bye And that's another episode of the Tomato Timer. If you'd like to ask your questions and join us live next week, join the Xenos Discord server. The invite link is in the description. And to learn more about Xenos and how a bunch of students are on a mission of making quality education accessible to all, go to xenos.org. Bye for now.